Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Reading Your Real Paranormal Unexplainable Stories. These are real stories that my fans, my subscribers, that you guys have submitted to me and for some reason this episode, this time around, so many of you guys had such great stories. Like I was reading through all of them for hours but there are crazy stories you guys so buckle up you guys will love this episode. Remember, if you have any unexplainable paranormal stories that you've encountered throughout your life, leave a comment down below. I highly suggest that while you're watching this video, get some popcorn, get some meals, whether you're eating lunch or dinner. It will make your nerves a lot better if you're eating something, doing your homework, at least fidget on something. For today's lunch, I personally decided to make this rice paper dumpling hack that I saw on TikTok and I made it myself and it was so good, you guys. And as I've talked about multiple times before, I've been trying to take care of my health and one of the ways I do it is with bone broth. Bone broths are excellent source of collagen, protein, so many minerals that we personally don't get from our modern diets. That's why so many Korean food incorporates bone broth but they are so difficult to make you literally have to simmer them for hours and hours so there's an easy way you could get organic bone broth and I want to say thank you to Kettle and Fire for partnering up with me today. The thing I love about Kettle and Fire is that they use 100% grass-fed beef which is the highest quality beef you could get and they use pasture raised chicken bones. Their broth are slow simmered for 20 plus hours with organic spices, vegetables, and apple cider vinegar. Bone broth is often used to help with gut related health issues especially leaky gut. If you want to improve your skin, hair, nails, especially your joints, especially if you're feeling under the weather, you're sick, or if you're on a diet and want to consume less calories, I highly recommend using bone broth to make a quick soup. Put some saltine crackers and that's my quick breakfast or lunch. I also made these Korean style chicken broth noodles, put a little bit of cilantro, mushrooms, onions, garlic. Oh my god, the best lunch that I had in a long time. So nutritious and it just makes quick eating so much healthier with Kettle and Fire. So I highly recommend it if you guys check it out. So go to kettleandfire.com and use code CRAZYTV to get 20% off your order. You guys know sponsors just really help to continue growing my channel and just by clicking the link to today's sponsor is really supporting me. So thank you so much and let's get to the stories. Buckle up for this one. So Soft Kumi says, okay, so here's my story. This is a sign to not buy things from odd shops. What is an odd shop? My older cousin who was 18 at the time bought this necklace. Let's say my cousin's name is Andy. It was a very odd necklace. It's a green small stone, keep that in mind. When she bought it, weird stuff kept happening such as chairs falling on their own. After four weeks of her having the necklace, my grandpa got sick. My grandpa is a very healthy man at the time, so it wasn't possible that he could get sick. After two days, my mother started to dream about demons. My aunt tried to tell a shaman since she realized bad stuff were happening. The shaman warned us to get rid of the necklace. Andy didn't listen, she didn't wear it but still kept it. We tried to heal our grandpa but he didn't make it. My older cousin Kathy realized that Andy still had the necklace. So she took the necklace to a shaman and broke it. After that, all the bad stuff stopped. Now we realize that the necklace was from a Buddha that had been broken. A broken Buddha gives a curse to whoever has it. Andy explained to us that it was from a friend of hers that also had it. Her friend died. Luckily, we're safe now, so hopefully you guys will stay safe too. Interesting. So odd shops. I'm thinking, is it like a vintage shop? Was it like a spiritual store shop that sells all different kinds of gems? This story is really interesting because I didn't know that certain objects that are not related to you, that is cursed by someone that doesn't know you, could have an effect on you. Because everybody still has a protection. Like you have your own spiritual protection. And I personally believe that you have to allow it. Either you have to allow it or you're pretty weak when it comes to your emotions and spiritually your energy energy is not strong enough to protect yourself. So the fact that this gem or necklace could have a huge impact on you, that says a lot about who started this object. Like you said, it was probably a shaman who had huge powers, big powers to do this. We're talking about cursing foods. Apparently this is the way to do a love spell into someone's food and making them fall in love with you. This is a crazy story. Sarah L says, in my place, there's a disgusting black magic called nasi kankang, squat rice. 
where the practitioner uses that to tie the husband using the coke to rice, is some sort of love potion where the husband will follow everything the wife says. And Chanel commented, in our country, that's called lame or guayuma. That spell is used via cursing an oil or drink and mixing it into a meal. Then the intent is meant to blank out as if hypnotized, and after that only follows what the enchanter says or approves what the enchanter does. The minute the potion stops to be given, as it has to be fed daily in every meal, the intended consciousness returns and the memories for the years she he has was given the potion would seem like a blur without meaning. One will find himself herself shackled with a family that they don't remember making or in an affair that they don't remember being attached to. It happens with my mom's distant relative. She went to Manila for work. She then met a man. They only talked once and had a meal together once. That's the last thing she remembers before she disappeared for a decade. When she returned to visit my grandma in Iligan City, Mindano, she explained that she found herself in Marawi City, a decade older with three kids, and it seems her husband has died. She doesn't remember marrying or giving birth to kids. She was even more surprised to see the man she was supposed to mourn is the same man who she had last meal with in her last memory. The elders assumed that the last meal she was given was the lame. Whoa, mind blown. I did hear about love spells, but I didn't hear about love potions that actually could blank you out. Isn't that crazy? The fact that you could put something, I guess, mixed in with potions and intentions and you put it into someone's food and it could literally break down their spiritual energy barrier, consciousness, whatever you call it, and you could take control of them until the master has died or the food, the potion has been stopped. I feel so bad for your aunt or your family member that has done this. I mean, she technically, she was violated in her will. And not only that, you wake up and you're like 10 years older. A lot of witches and shamans say that like love potions, love spells are black magic because you're pulling someone into your life without their will or permission. I really wonder if these kind of spells will work outside of the countryside, but maybe it doesn't work as well in cities like this where supernatural things are not believed in as much as the countryside because again, your intent, your beliefs are so important. So as if enough people believe in it, I do believe that amplifies the whatever supernatural spiritual energy that's out there. And the less you believe in, the less power that spiritual world has in effect. If any of you guys have more stories of these potions, love potions, leave a comment down below because that just put a shiver down my spine. Evelyn says, this is a story about sleep paralysis. I was 17 when I had my first sleep paralysis dream. It was a weird feeling. My body felt weighted down, hyper awake of my surroundings and unable to move a single finger. I forgot about the experience until a couple months later. I woke up to my body numb and for some reason my body filled up with pure fear. I have never felt the fight or flight feeling until that night. In the corner of my closet, a black shadow stared at me. I could hear my dad getting ready for work next door and I just couldn't scream for help. I woke up and kept it to myself. Around this time, my younger sister refused to sleep in my room and I don't know why but I just chalked it up as a normal six-year-old behavior. I would have these sleep paralysis dreams at random times. Every three months, two months, it was always the same. I got fed up and moved my bed on the opposite side of the, my room, so I'm facing the restroom door instead. However, I still saw the shadow and it would appear behind the door. Soon after, my dreams became so realistic that I couldn't tell what was real. For example, I woke up to it staring at me, but this time I couldn't breathe at all as if someone was choking me. I can hear my dad cooking in the kitchen, so I forced myself awake, but I still couldn't breathe. I opened my bedroom door and fell onto the kitchen floor, desperately trying to breathe. My dad crouched to my side and kept asking what is wrong and to breathe. And the next thing you know, I woke up in bed. So technically it was like a sleep paralysis dream. After that experience, I had to tell my parents. My mom said that I watched too many horror movies and that's all in my head. I then remember that my sister doesn't sleep in my room. I confronted her and asked, 
Is it because of the man in the closet? She just stared at my wide eyed and nodded yes. She said that she saw it once and refused to sleep in my room. I would continue to have the dreams and my parents would still call me crazy. It wasn't until the night that it touched me that my mom began to listen to me. I was sleeping against the wall and heard the bedroom door open. Sometimes my mom would come in my room to lay next to me after dropping my sister off to school. And if she sees me awake, then she'll force me to clean. I wanted to sleep in so I kept my eyes closed. I heard her approach my bed. I felt the bed dip behind me and felt her body lay behind. She wrapped her arms around me slowly and it was that moment that I realized that my back was against the wall so there couldn't possibly be someone there. And like a switch, my body felt numb. I couldn't do anything as I saw a wrinkly pale hand pass through my line of sight. It tried to drag my body into its body. My hands were holding onto its arms and in my head, I kept screaming for help. It took maybe 20 to 30 seconds until I woke up and I just bawled my eyes out. I felt violated. That morning, I broke down crying in the car as my mom was driving me to school. I kept begging her to believe me. I didn't believe in the supernatural and this experience couldn't be explained. She couldn't blame the movies because these dreams would occur on random days. I think my mom finally took me seriously after watching my breakdown. She asked my aunt, who was the most spiritual person you could ever meet, to sage my room. It worked for a while, but my body sometimes falls into sleep paralysis. But since it was such a traumatic experience, the moment my finger fell numb, my body jerks itself awake before the sleep paralysis can set in. This is truly a terrifying experience that I do not wish upon anyone. Thank you so much, Evelyn. And to me, what it seems like is that it's not your normal sleep paralysis like I used to have. I never personally had like these kind of demonic experiences until the recent I'll talk about. So in my personal opinion, if your sister who is six years old and as the younger you are, the more sensitive you are to the other side, if she also acknowledged that there's someone there in your room, probably a ghost that's stuck in that time frame and is trying to grab you in because technically I heard that ghost and certain spirits need like a host to take over or they're lost themselves and they're trying to really bother your soul or spirit and obviously this doesn't seem like a nice ghost it really does seem like a ghost that's stuck and really wants to feed off of your energy so i had sleep paralysis almost every single day as a child this happened about a year ago i don't think i've shared it it was a time when i had sleep paralysis in a very long time and i was in a good position you know it's not like i was having any major stress or something like that I wasn't extra tired or anything, but I remember I fell into sleep paralysis. I couldn't move. That moment, this was the first time something like this ever happened to me, I believe, where I heard this demonic voice, the most demonic voice that you could ever think of just coming from my subconsciousness and screaming to me. It was saying something like, what are you doing? Who do you think you are? It was saying these kind of degrading things. And then I got so freaked out, you guys. Like I said, I never had demonic experiences when I had sleep paralysis, but this was one of the most demonic, dark energy and feeling and like emotions just, just coming from my consciousness. It's really hard to explain, but when you're in a sleep paralysis, your emotions are very, very sensitive. Every single annoying, fear energy you could ever feel in your consciousness and i remember like the feeling of being sucked i don't know if this was me my own dark side or if it was like a spirit i don't think it was a spirit because i just know i don't have any spirits in my apartment so i felt like myself sucking out and i just woke up and it was one of the very very rare moments in my life where i woke up sweating and being fearful of something so that was the last time that i had my sleep paralysis i don't know why and where this demonic voice came from you guys it almost sounded like my own dark side in a demonic voice telling me who do you think you are and trying to degrade me. I don't know why that happened. All right, CC says, hi Grace. The story I like to tell is actually from one of my coworkers. She told me a horrifying encounter she had with the Nahual. According to Mexican culture, a Nahual is a witch or supernatural being that has the ability to shapeshift into an animal. I've heard about this. My coworker's story is as follows. When she was 13, she slept over at her cousin's house for the night. When it was time to go to sleep, they turned off all the lights and pulled back the curtains a bit to let the moonlight in. 
As they were dozing off, they would hear what sounded like claws scratching at the house outside the window. They figured it was a raccoon or a rodent and brushed it off. However, they then began to hear human-like wails and screams outside. Getting scared, the cousin asked my coworker, who was closest to the window, to close the curtains. As my coworker was doing so, she looked outside and saw a huge black bird. A bit over five feet tall, that, that's, that's a human size. On a podium near the gate of the house. The first thing that struck her as odd apart from its unnatural huge stature was the fact that it was standing on the podium on two feet, not on claws as a bird should have. So it had human feet? Another odd thing was its eyes. It had the eyes of a human and was staring straight at her. Paralyzed with fear, she was unable to move nor look away until her cousin screamed, grabbed her, and ran to the parents. When they went back to check, whatever it was near the gate was gone. Yo, I wanted to talk about this because there has been many, many talks and encounters of people seeing these animals that turn into humans. And obviously it sounds like a freaking movie or Harry Potter stuff, but apparently it's real and usually happens around more countryside and countries that still believe in the supernaturals more. Like in Mexico, there's so many stories of this. In Africa, there's so many stories of this. Like, can you imagine a five foot tall bird? That's a freaking dinosaur. So on TikTok, there is a lady who posted this story. I'm gonna play the video for you guys, but to sum it up, she claims that when she was young and she was in some country where she grew up in, in the middle of the night, she saw a cat outside and this cat's face started to move upside down and it turned into a human. And she was sick for a couple days after that. So there's a lot of stories when you encounter these human animals, you become sick. I'm not sure if it's a curse. I'm not sure why. Or if you see these things that like the energy sticks onto you. Don't know why, but here's a video. Should have stopped looking because the face of the cat started to turn upside down. Like right? the body started to like twist. Another submission by Cha. I'm not gonna read the whole thing because it's really long, but to sum it up, Cha also submitted a story saying that in Mexico, her and her relative's cousins encountered an owl or a bird that turned into a human as well. You can pause it and read it if you want. She claims that she got really sick after the first encounter with this human animal. And apparently in the Mexican culture, these are witches that curse themselves or curse others to make you sick, to suck in your positive energy in exchange for their negative energy, I guess. I personally would love to see this myself in real life. Of course, I don't want to jinx myself, but you know, it would be cool to see an animal turn into a human like Harry Potter. Maybe I should ask my cat if he's a human. This submission is by Chan. Jan says, not sure if I was just tired or seeing things, driving late at night, but here's my story. One night I was driving along this long stretch of road with no street lights. Moments later, I saw a pair of headlights coming up my rear and they were approaching fast. I was already going 20 miles per hour over the speed limit since there was no oncoming traffic and the road was completely empty around the time. Also, I haven't seen another car on the road around this time except this vehicle approaching me from behind. My first thought was to pull over and let the car behind me pass, but I couldn't see the road. It was only a two lane road and the sides of the roads were tall grass and trees. The car behind me tailgates me for about five minutes before overtaking me. This is where I find things a little strange. As the car behind overtakes me, I've noticed that the vehicle looked very old. It was a pickup truck that looked like it was from the 30s or 40s. That's really old. It also had an old style license plate from that era as well. At this point, I was confused. I was already doing well over 70 miles per hour in a modern BMW and there was no way an old pickup truck from that era could have passed me. I also found it weird how I heard no noise from its engine as it overtook me. It was completely silent. I kept my distance and followed the old truck until the road came to a bend. Moments later, the pickup truck in front of me took a sharp right turn and crashed onto the trees and disappeared out of nowhere. I lowered my speed and proceeded with caution as I approached the road where the truck had seemingly crashed. But as I approached the bent, there was no remains of the pickup truck anywhere. As I looked among the trees, I noticed a big white wooden cross with flowers mounted on the bark of one of the trees. 
I later found out that the road I was driving on had a history of car accidents and one of the accidents involved a pickup that lost control and ran into a tree many decades ago. I never take that road late at night after that incident. Goosebumps. What? Goosebumps. You literally saw a dead car from the 40s. So I could have an explanation for this. So I have a friend, she is very um, sensitive and open to the paranormal and things like that, and she is legit. And she would tell me an explanation of certain types of ghosts or like ghost cars or encounters. You know, you have your normal ghosts and spirits or Pythagoras, and there's others where it's more of like a movie being played. So it's like a spirit, a ghost, a pickup truck, or sometimes if you go near where battlefields used to be back in the 1800s or 1900s where wars were happening, people claim to see like soldiers walking by with like no arms and no legs. So these apparently are more like not actual ghosts that are trying to haunt you, but these are more like movies being replayed, sceneries being replayed over and over again. The only explanation I could give is sometimes when you're really tired, like Tan was, or if you're really sensitive to the other side, there's like a little veil, like a little opening that you're able to see the past. So like they say, sometimes the past, present, and future to us is linear, time is linear to us, but on the other side, or if you see it from a God's perspective, time is more infinite, it happens at the same time. Obviously to us, we can't comprehend it, and that could be one of the reasons why we see these scenes being replayed. But in this story, Chan, I mean, you are driving. When you're, even if you're tired when you're driving, you gotta be focused. So the fact that you're focused and still seeing the other side, Whoa. True says, hello Grace, this experience isn't mine but my mother's. I would also like to add that I cannot see ghosts but I would be in situations where paranormal things are happening to other people and I wouldn't be aware of it. So my mother is a Hmong shaman. Hmong shamans are people who help sick people's spirits and she's able to see ghosts. This one particular night, it was only my mom and I home. I was in a furnished basement binge watching some anime. It was around 12 a.m. when I decided to head to bed upstairs. As I was walking up to my stairs, my mom asked me, did you hear me calling for you? I replied to her that I didn't hear her and that I was in the basement. What she told me next just gave me the chills. She told me that she was sleeping when all of a sudden she was awoken by an entity that stood by her bedroom door. This entity had the face of my grandpa and mind you, my grandpa had passed a long time ago. It proceeded to say to my mom, honey, let me in. My mom started to call for me because she was scared. Luckily, since my mom was a shaman, her spirit guides helped chase the ghost away. The ghost has disguised itself as my grandpa so it could trick my ancestors that protects her home into coming inside of her house to get to my mom. My mom knew this wasn't her dad because of the way the entity approached my mom, it scared her. When a deceased loved one comes to visit you, it should never approach you in a scary form. I have a lot of questions about this. So so technically, the ghost can't approach you until the ghost calls the ancestors to get to your mom? Is that what it means? Isn't it funny how like in our 3D world, we have, you know, murderers and people who try to scam you and pretend to like catfish you and stuff like that. And even in the spirit world, we got catfishing y'all. How, how are people's catfishing in the spirit world? Like seriously, use your intuitions. That's the only way to protect you in the spirit world. Ooh, this one is a good one. This one is by Angie. This literally happened a couple days ago. I was trying to channel spirits for fun, but forgot to close close the session. There's a ghost hunting app, what? Anyway, I started the app and the app had like 300 plus words and would randomly say these words. So I'm messing around with it and getting more activity than I normally do. Some stuff even connected to prior paranormal experiences I had. Anyway, it said closet two times and right after that it said watching you. It said a lot of other things and one of them was demon. I eventually deleted the app thinking that it was only spitting out words because that's just how the app was programmed. Fast forward a few hours, I'm still kind of on the edge and a little scared of my closet. So I walked up to it and jerked it open. Anyway, nothing happened and I continued to listen to music. Once I finished listening to the music, I decided to put some clothes I had in my closet. 
So I jerked the door open like last time and I heard loud banging at the time I had headphones and was listening to a video so I thought it was just a video or one of my siblings. But my water bottle which I had on a rack in my closet hit my feet and rolled out of the closet. I dropped my clothes and hopped back onto the bed, scared as hell. After a bit of calming myself down, I picked up the water bottle and began to think about ways to debunk it. I tried blowing on it, it wouldn't even move an inch. I shook the rack on it and it wouldn't budge. I haven't rearranged my closet in a while, so the bottle has been in the same place for weeks and maybe even a month or two. Even if it was my siblings banging on the wall, why did the ghost app say closet? twice. After a bit, I prayed and told whatever was in my closet to leave immediately and was not welcome. The next day, I noticed that the cold spot that was in my closet has disappeared. There has been a cold spot in my closet for a while, so maybe I got rid of more than one spirit. Anyway, it was safe to say I am safe and I threw the water bottle away immediately. Yes, we can channel ghosts through even our phones and apps. Like, I thought that could only be possible to Ouija board. Not gonna lie, I'm a little tempted to download it to see if it's real. Glad you're safe. Glad you're able to protect yourself. I don't know why you were playing this alone. Milanti says, one of the things that I countered was I used to live with my friend in a rented house to pursue our higher studies and we both live in this house all by ourselves. So it was a summer afternoon of last year. My friend has gone to take a bath, which was not attached to her room and it was situated outside of the room. And I was in the living room talking to one of my friends on the phone. After 20 minutes, my friend who has gone to take some bath comes in and went to the next room and I legit saw her in wet hair and black t-shirts. After entering the room, she didn't close the door behind her back and walked straight to the second room without even talking to me. It was weird, but I brushed it off. As she didn't close the entrance door behind her back, I thought that she was going to use the bathroom again, so I waited for her to go to the bathroom while I was still talking to my friend. 15 minutes later, when she didn't come out of the second room, I thought to myself, okay, maybe she will not use the bathroom again, so let me go and lock the door as the mosquitoes are coming in. I went to lock the door, and while returning, I saw a part of her back and slippers underneath the bed of the second room. So I sat in the living room and continued to talk on the phone, and after some minutes, I heard a knock on the entrance door, and I got scared thinking, who might it be in this hour? Maybe it was a landlord that has come to ask how we were doing. So I cut the call and went to the open of the door and to my surprise, I saw my friend whom I just saw walking in with wet hair standing in front of me. And I asked her, you already came in an hour ago, how could you be standing outside the door? Then she looked totally surprised and told me I never came in. I just came out of the bathroom now, who could that be? I told her, okay, let's go and see who's sitting there in the second room. And when we went inside, we saw no one. Till now, this has been the scariest thing that has ever happened to me. And mind you, my friend had the same t-shirt put on, the same wet hair. Like the entity or whatever it was that has entered my room was in the form of my friend. What would have happened if you actually talked to the fake friend, to the spirit? Would they have answered you back? Like I'm literally getting chills. I haven't read a story yet where someone actually talks and interacts with the fake, fake family member or friend. I really wonder what would have happened. But I'm glad you're safe and you didn't talk to them because who knows, they might have sucked your soul. I am hypnotizing all of you and telling you guys, hit the like button on this video. And just checking out sponsors, all of these things really help to support my channel so that I can continue doing more episodes like this. And I'll see you in my next video. Remember to comment down below if you guys have any experiences. Bye.